Hey guys, my name's Aaron Massey. Today I'm gonna to show you how I built this DIY cheese cutting board out of some scrap wood. For this project, I'm gonna be using this cheese slicer kit that I picked up from Woodcraft. It makes things super simple, which is why this is a really simple DIY project. Everything that you need is right here inside. It's got instructions inside for how big of a cutting board you can make, and it also has all the hardware. So really all that you need to do is build a little cutting board to attach the hardware to. The kit comes in a large and a small size. I'm using the large size and it cost me 12 bucks, and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can buy it. For this project, I'm gonna be using a bunch of scrap wood and offcuts from previous projects. I've got some maple, some walnut, some mahogany and some cherry. The instructions recommend a size of three quarter inches thick by nine and a half inches long by five and three quarter inches wide. So I'm gonna go with roughly that dimensions. I think I'm gonna make it slightly thicker and cut everything down to size. So for the first cuts, I'm actually making things a little bit wider at inch and a quarter because I plan to plane it down a little bit later. Once I've got all the pieces cut to thickness, I take them over to the chop saw and cut them roughly down to about 10 inches. I'm not worried about final dimensions at this point because I'll cut it down once it's all glued up. Now I can kind of play around with the color scheme and see what kind of grain pattern I want to go with. And then it's time to glue up and clamp the pieces together. I'm using rapid fuse to glue up the boards because I don't want to wait a long time for the glue to dry and it's perfect for this small application. After about 30 minutes in the clamps, I take the board out and then can take it back to the table saw and rip it to its final dimension. First, I'm ripping it to the width of five and three quarters based on the instructions, and then I'm cross cutting it to length at nine and a half inches. Then I bring it over to the planer for a couple passes to bring it down to its final thickness. I'm going with one inch instead of the three quarter inch. Now, if you don't have a planer for this step, that's totally okay. You don't really need one. You could rip the pieces a little bit thinner at the beginning and then glue everything up and then sand it all down with an orbital sander and stuff and get rid of the little ridges. You don't necessarily need the planer. I'm choosing to use the planer because I have one and it makes things a lot faster. Next, it's time to cut the kerf for the wire to pass through. The instructions say to cut it three inches from the end of the board and three eighths deep but I'm cutting it at a half inch deep because I made the board a little thicker. Then it's time to drill a quarter inch hole in the end of the board for the arm to slide inside the board. I mark the center point of my board five inches from the front edge and drill a hole three and seven eighths inches deep on the drill press. Next I dry fit all the hardware, sliding the looped wire into the kerf and then sliding the arm through the wire. I had to bend the arm slightly in order to keep the wire centered in the kerf cut so it didn't hit the board but the arm bent pretty easily, so it wasn't that difficult. I take it back apart and then round over all the edges with a quarter inch round over bit on the palm router and then sand it down smooth to 220 grit. Finally, I add my brand to the underside of the board before adding a few coats of food safe butcher block conditioner. And with the hardware back in place, this board is finished. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want more detailed and step-by-step -step instructions, I will have a companion piece to this video up on my blog, which you can check out at mrfixitdiy.com. I just rebuilt the website. It's completely brand new. There you'll find all my DIY plans and projects, as well as a bunch of home improvement tutorials and additional blog posts. So make sure you guys go check that out. And if you like this video, you might like some of my other videos. I post new content all the time. So please take a look at those videos. I'll leave links to those right here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.